What's the word, y'all? The Denver Nuggets now have a 3-1 lead in this NBA Finals, and it feels like this season is about to be wrapped up very soon. Because again, only one team has come back from down 3-1 in the NBA Finals, and I'm looking at that Heat roster, and ain't no LeBron James. Ain't no Kyrie Irving. There, there is a Kevin Love. <laughs> there is a Kevin Love, but the, it just don't feel likely for the Miami Heat because recently the Heat haven't looked like the team that we saw get them to this point. The Heat have lost six of their last eight games, and those six losses have come by an average margin of 11.7 points. Like, I know that they won game two of the series, and I know that they won game seven against the Boston Celtics, but they haven't looked like the same team. Part of that is maybe Jimmy Butler's ankle or his inability to take over like he did in the first round. Part of that might be the role players coming back down to earth where there's no Kayla Martin almost winning the conference finals MVP. Max Struess not shooting it the same way. And part of that is just that the Denver Nuggets are the better team. But since this hasn't been ultra close, and since we have three game, three days in between each game, it feels like, there's been a lot of conversation on Twitter, and I hate both ends of the spectrum. But before we talk about that, did you know that I, I'm currently on tour? Okay, we're currently on tour. Uh, we got a bunch of different stops. We already did the Philadelphia show. It was live. Uh, we have Miami this week. The idea was to be in Miami for game six. I don't know if we're getting game six, but still, we're going to be there. We're doing a live taping of our podcast, a meet and greet after. And if there is a game six... We gonna watch the game. It is 100% free. It is June the 15th. I, I really want to see y'all come in and pack out the house. I've done an absolute terrible job promoting this. Um, so hopefully this is not too short of a notice to get y'all in the door. June 15th at, at this place. I, I'm not even going to try that, but it, it's this. It's here. Last show was absolutely crazy. It was fun. Laughs. Good. And our goal is to make each stop along the tour better than the last. So we already got some changes. If you're a Philly show, this one should be better. So... Uh, uh, just RSVP, completely free. Link is in the description. You cannot get in the door without an RSVP, but again, it is free. Anyway, let's talk about this discourse that we're seeing on Twitter. The first one that I really hate is that this is the easiest path for an NBA championship ever. Because if you look at the seeding, um, the, Nuggets, the Nuggets went against an eight-seeded um, Minnesota Temples team. They went against a four or five seeded Phoenix Suns. I don't even remember. Four seeded Phoenix Suns, a seven seeded LA Lakers, and then an eight seeded Miami Heat in the finals. If you just add up the accumulation of the seeding, this is probably the lowest level of difficulty competition. And I think that is false. The NBA regular season spans from September, October to, to April. To April. There's a ton of. That happens in the course of an individual season where we see year in and year out that the amount of wins that you have isn't a direct correlation to how good of a team you can be. Because if that was the case, the one seed, the team that wins the most amount of games every single season would just cakewalk to the finals. That's just not the case. The first round I give you, you know what I'm saying? The, the Minnesota Timberwolves weren't very good. Shout out to Anthony Edwards and them. But they lost Carl Anthony Towns a couple weeks into the season. And then he had to come back. They weren't a very good team. Everybody knew that that was a cakewalk for the Denver Nuggets. Cool. I'm going to act like that majority of people picked the Suns to win the second round. I understand that they went through some injuries. But it's still Kevin Durant and it's still Devin Booker. And the one that bothers me the most is the Lakers. The Lakers were a team that got it through the plan for sure. But the Lakers were a really, really good team. If you're looking at the final record of the Lakers and said, oh, just, that, that's a seven seed. They went against the finals. You're just subjectively wrong. The Lakers were tied for the best record in the Western Conference after the trade deadline. Remember what that team was for the first half of the season. They remember how good they were after they made the acquisitions that they did. I understand that it ended in a sweep, but that Lakers team was no normal seven seed. Before the playoffs started, before the Lakers even guaranteed that they were going to make it to the playoffs, there was conversations on ESPN, would you take the Lakers or the Denver Nuggets in a seven-game series? And everybody on the panel took the Lakers because the Lakers were good. Now, I personally wouldn't have took them, but they were good. So yes, they were a seven seed, but that's not the normal seven seed we see in basketball. And the same can be said about the Miami Heat. This is not some luck of the draw appearance in the NBA Finals. The game of basketball is different than a lot of other sports. Whether it be football being the one-game elimination in the playoffs or baseball just being, I don't know, in a league of its own when it comes to randomness, the NBA, for the most part, usually seems the better team win a seven-game series. Look at every single one of their opponents, every single one of their stops. They won against... The Milwaukee Bucks in the first round. Yes, Giannis went down with an injury very early on. But eventually Giannis came back, right? They, the, the, the Milwaukee Bucks lost both of the games with Giannis on the court. Jimmy Butler turned into the supernova version of himself. That, that is 
in itself an indication that this Miami Heat team is not a normal eight seed. The Milwaukee Bucks were the favorite, a pretty, a pretty, pretty convincing favorite to win the entire thing. Not to get to the conference finals, not to get out of the first, to win the NBA championship. And the Miami Heat dusted them off like that. But even with that, they went against the New York Knicks, and the Knicks just took care of business against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, and a lot of people were like, oh my God, are the Knicks about to make a conference finals appearance? Because the Knicks were the deeper team. They had a really good coach in Tom Thibodeau. They had an all-star caliber player in Jalen Brunson. And though Julius Randle didn't play very well, he just had surgery, so that kind of explains it. People thought, me included, that the New York Knicks were going to win that series. Didn't happen. And then we get to the conference finals, and the, and the Boston Celtics just won a very convincing game seven against the 76ers. And the Celtics were a minus 650 favorite to win that series. Now, I know that Vegas odds don't mean everything, but that just showcases how much of an underdog the Miami Heat were, and they took care of business there as well. So, yes, we're talking about an eight seed. But similarly with the with the Lakers, these two, the seedings don't really show the full showcase of what these teams are and can be. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, this is this is not one of the one of the best finals runs of all time either. I think it's somewhere in the middle, which is okay. We don't have to be polar extreme one way or another. Like if we want to talk about individual runs for Jokic as far as his individual performances, for sure. But again, it's, this is not like some legendary, oh my God, this is the top five ring of all time. Personally, I don't subscribe to those type of things. I'm just saying, if, when you win a championship, you win in the championship. That's all that really matters. But this is not one of them as well. This is just a championship that is well-deserved from a really good team. At the end of the day, this is a one-seeded roster that did what they were supposed to do. Even if you do still believe that this is the easiest path, what, what were the different Nuggets supposed to do? They don't control who's in front of them. All they can do is take care of business no matter what it is. And if you look at every single stop, five-game series, six-game series, four-game series, and then this one could be five, six, and seven, whatever. They've taken care of business, and that's all you can really ask for. The next thing is about how b boring this series is. And you know what? I can't be mad at you if you think that is the case um, because it, it hasn't hit crazily, but it, it also isn't boring for me because I really want people to remember what a boring series really looks like. You remember 2018? You, you, you remember when the Golden State Warriors had Kevin Durant and they completely swept the, the, the Cavaliers? 10-point victory, 19-point victory, 8-point victory, and then 23-point victory. Th this was a boring series. Of course, the one thing that this series has over the one we're watching right now is the star power involved with Kevin, with Clay, with Steph, with Bron. Like, the, the star power objectively was there. But the series wasn't competitive. I'm 100% arguing that this 2023 NBA Finals is way more competitive than this one. And I'm not even just talking about the fact that the Miami Heat have won one game. I think we have two really good coaches making adjustments every single opportunity that they can to try to put their team in the very best position. We saw one of these games go to the last possible shot. Again, I, I can't say that it is the most entertaining series of all time, but it's far from the most boring that we've had in the last five years. But if you want to make the argument about the star power being the decided factor of 2018 versus 2023, I can understand that because watching LeBron, whether uh, he's getting swept or winning in seven is still watching LeBron. But man, have we been really paying attention to, to what Jokic is doing? Because optically for me as a basketball fanatic, as a basketball super fan that loves the game so much, watching Jokic night in and night out is about as, as good as it can get. So it's not the hardest ring of all time. It's not the easiest ring of all time. And it's not the most boring finals. Definitely not in recent history. You can disagree. That's completely okay. But those are just my opinions. You let me know in the comment section.